If you ever wondered how to make a liquid dissolve kind of effect on images, then in this video, I'll break down exactly how to do that in Houdini. So let's jump right in. So a bit of background information. Basically what we want to do is we want to create a point cloud and those point cloud we're going to use as the particles and we want to assign an attribute called density to them. So the denser the particles are, the more they will sink to the bottom and the less denser are, the more they will go towards the top and therefore you can create this really nice swirly kind of patterns so yeah we need to generate a point cloud then we need to add color information to it so load in a painting then we need to convert those color data to density attributes and that we need to feed in to a flip simulation part of it was inspired by Antecma's video about how to create Rayleigh Taylor instability but it uses a slightly different technique and you can apply this to different paintings different images like you can feed in whatever you want and you can tweak it. So let's jump right into Houdini, lay down a box note. And the values that worked well for me was 0.6 on the X because I thought 60 centimeters wide is kind of like a nice painting size and 0.4 on the Y and a really small value on the Z axis because we only want one layer of particles. So we only have one particle in the z-axis. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to transform this in minus 90 degrees. And the reason for this is, you'll see it in a second, but if we want to overlay a map onto the particles, then for some reason I couldn't do it when it was facing that way. But for the simulation, we want to keep it like this because we're going to use gravity. So it makes more sense to have it pointing upwards. But yeah, let's put it down for now. Let's append then points from volume. So with this we create the point cloud in order to feed it in and let's copy the parameters and let's paste this in. So basically we want to use the thickness of the z-axis to drive how far our particles are apart because that way you can see we only have one layer of particles and it will make the simulation look a lot nicer. So now we have a point cloud we want to get some color data onto it. So let's append an attribute from map and let's load in painting. So I found a painting from Dali. Dali is one of my favorite artists. So the reason I chose this as well is because there's quite a big contrast in the middle. Like the head is a very different color from the outside and there's some dark bits here. So that will make the simulation look really nice. So you can just go ahead and download that painting. Let's load it in. And you can use any painting you like to be honest, doesn't really matter. So now let's move our points back. So they actually stand up. And now you can see if we didn't take that step and disable the transform, I can't get the right color data in there. So if you know a way to sort this out, then please leave a comment down below. And the thing we want to do now is we want to remap the color data to a density attribute so we can drive that in a simulation. The easiest way to do that is drop down a point wrangle and we could just say float attribute density is we want to map it to our CDR value, but obviously we want to remap it and we don't just want to keep it like that. So let's disable this for a second and see the data we're working with. So if we go to the geometry spreadsheet, we can see we have all these different values and we can use that in our simulation. So you can see in the CDR, we have quite a range. So it goes from almost one until almost zero. So let's use that in a fit node. So fit node basically remaps the values we put in towards values we define ourselves. So we say fit the CDR value and the input goes from zero to one. And now we can define where we wanna remap those values to. So we could just make sliders for this. So type channel float minimum and channel float and this is the maximum value for the density we use. Have a bracket to close off the fit function and create sliders. And the values that worked for me were a minimum of 800 and a maximum of oops, 1600. But you can play with this yourself. So you can load in different images in this node and use different density attributes. And let's append a in points for this. So whenever we want to put in different source files, then we can easily do that. Now let's append a DOP network. So here we'll create our simulation. And first things first, let's add a gravity to it because that will drive the simulation. And because we don't use any other forces, then gravity 
Then the second thing is we need a flip solver in order to solve our simulation. And the flip solver needs a flip object, the object we're actually gonna simulate in the solver. So first thing is let's define our object. So we don't want a surface, we want a particle field because we generated points. And we can point this to our in points null. Just let it cook for a second. And it's really slow now. And the reason for this is it's generating sprites. I saw all those little bubbles you saw earlier, but we don't want that. We just want to simulate particles. And now you can see it's a lot more responsive. And this is actually what we want. The second thing is, so if you zoom out, you can see we have this massive simulation box but our simulation is only happening in the painting itself so we want to use the values of the box we created earlier where we generated the points in as the boundaries for our solver so the simulation won't go outside that solver so let's jump up copy the parameters from the size of the box and then in our flip solver in the volume motion we want to paste relative reference so whatever scale we're going to give the box it will automatically update it here. You can see our simulation automatically adapts to what we do with our box. And uh, let's jump back in. And now we want to give the flip object close boundaries. So we basically say create a collision at the end of our flip solver's boundaries. So it won't go out. Because if we don't do that, you can just see all the particles just fall out. And if we close the boundaries, you can see not much is happening because we didn't set our particle separation. So now it's way bigger than what we defined here. So in the points from volume, we defined how far apart we want the particles to be. So we can just copy this parameter again, paste it, relative reference. And if we simulate now, not much is happening because they all have the same density. So they'll just be kind of stuck in this box without any variation. And you can set the density attribute in the flip solver. So here we see a density tab. We can tick density by attribute. And because we already created an attribute called density in the flip object, if we middle mouse, we can see here we have a density float value. And let's hit simulation now. And now what you can see is we get this really nice swirly kind of motion. The thing is, it's a bit quick now. So we can jump up and we can set the simulation skill time 2.1. So it's 10 times as slow as normal. And now we can just hit simulate. Maybe to be safe, we can up our cache allowance a bit. And this depends on how much memory you have in your computer, just so we don't run out of RAM. And now you can see we get this really nice kind of swirly motion. So now you can see our simulation is working. Feel free to play with the density values you put in here. And you can put in different images and you can play around with it. And the only last thing we have to do is we have to put the particles back into zero on the z-axis. Because now you can see they really, they push each other apart quite far. And we want to keep the illusion that this is a painting. Yeah, if you render it, it won't be nice because you get lots of shadows from points sticking out in front of another. So let's append a point wrangle again. And we can just very simply say at P, so point position dot Z, because it's the Z axis is zero and that's it. And now you can see they stay still on the Z axis. So if I disable the point wrangle, you can see they start sticking out again. And that's it. Just a simple tutorial how to do these fluid motions. Definitely check out in Tecma if you don't know them yet, they have amazing Houdini tutorials and yeah, this tutorial is heavily inspired by their technique. If you like the video, then please give it a like. It helps me to get the video out to more people. If you want to see more content, then please subscribe. I'm doing weekly videos. I love to see you in the next one. Cheers.